I feel like the queen of the handbag. <laughs> Hello! Don't what? Don't go too far. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our kitchen. I'm Andre. This is my husband Rico. Just in case you don't know, we are here to do another food and wine review. Well, Rico's here to do another film and wine review. I I would dress up because I don't get much of a chance to dress up and go out with my handbags anymore. We are on a near full lockdown here. Restaurants and pubs are all closed, so we're not getting to go out very much. Although we haven't been out since March, have we? We just haven't been out. So we're just having our own little date night here tonight. I have my own personal chef who is going to cook up a delicious keto meal for me. I've not had much of a chance to play with my handbags. So I'm going to play with my handbag just now, or at least I'm going to use it for the intro before we get into the uh, cooking and the reviewing of the wine. Okay, Enrico, would you like to tell us what we're eating, what we're drinking, now that I've played with my handbag? Cheers! Rico. Oh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Whilst you're there, a thumbs up is always very much appreciated and uh, you can ring our bell too. And uh, yeah, Rico, over to you. Welcome back everybody. First of all, I would just like to thank you for all your lovely comments yet again. They just blow me away. Today, we are going to be having this Sauvignon Blanc. It's a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It's from the Marlborough Valley in New Zealand. It's called Grey Wacky. It's a 2019, as a screw, screw cap, and it's 13.5% alcohol. And has a little history. Not a long history because the winery was founded in 2009, which makes it about 11 years old. And the person who founded it was Kevin Judd, who was the chief winemaker at Cloudy Bay for 25 years. And when the big boys came and took over Cloudy Bay, Kevin moved on and he founded Grey Wacky. As I said, it's in the Marlborough region, which is the sort of northwest corner of the southern island of New Zealand. And he named this after sort of the bedrock of New Zealand because the, the vineyard was full of these round rocks, which are common in the bedrock of, of New Zealand. So tell us how we discovered this wine. How were we introduced to this wine? Well, because... we were introduced to this wine by a friend because he was always a Cloudy Bay person. He loved Cloudy Bay, he bought Cloudy Bay, he loves New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, although I've been educating him with, him with other Sauvignon Blancs and he's now testing Sauvignon Blancs from other countries, which he's quite impressed with. But he introduced us to this and I think it's a wonderful wine. We've had it before. He introduced who? You. you. <laughs> what happened was he came into the restaurant one night when we had the restaurant and in he came and he plonked this bottle of wine on the table and Andrew went up and she says, she looked and he says, corkage, she says, we don't do corkage, we're here to make money, she says, he says, no, 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 the wine's actually for you, he was actually having a joke and Andrew just lifted the bottle and said, thank you very much and didn't take his order, so <laughs> never mind. Anyway, let's... What do you mean I never took his order? Did you take his order? You must have forgot about him for about half an hour. Anyway. Well, I'm not a rubbish. You're talking to a true professional here. I know. I, know. I took the wine as he asked me yes, to. correct. And then went back and took his order. Okay? Right, so yes. I'm correcting you. The wine is in the freezer. Rico has just put the wine in the freezer. Good start to our date night, isn't it? <laughs> I never right. took the order. Okay then, tonight what we're going to have for our date night, it'll be a keto-friendly type of dinner again, apart from the potatoes which are for me. And what we're going to have is some lemon sole. We're going to pan fry this lemon sole. We're going to dress it with this almond flour. We're going to pan fry it in olive oil and a little butter. So is this just almond flour? Just almond flour, but I seasoned it with some salt and pepper and okay. it's been seasoned. Uh, we have some sh sliced shallots, two shallots there sliced, some sliced mushrooms, fresh parsley. 
that's our butter and that's all for the fish and some we're going to put some fresh cream in, in the, the mushroom sauce okay it's going to be for the fish and that's just, just our vegetable vegetable is going to be broccoli we're going to have some roasted cauliflower which I've, I've dressed this already just two tablespoons of olive oil some thyme garlic and a little sprinkle of cumin okay cumin so what's powder. the cheese for the cheese is once this cooks on a bit in the oven then we'll put the cheese on top and just let it finish off with the cheese okay so first of all we're going to put the oven to heat up and then we'll we'll get the cauliflower okay the so oven. what you're heating the oven up at we're going to heat the oven up to 200 degrees okay so that's going to go in the oven that's going to go in the as oven. it is as it is i'm going to put it in this tray here okay okay just to make sure this, it's been coated i've mixed it around but we'll just refresh it slightly okay and that's just going to get put into the oven tray now yep and how long is that going to take in the oven about half an hour 20 minutes to half an hour okay and cauliflower is absolutely delicious in the oven it's all well seasoned salt pepper of the thyme olive oil so about three tablespoons of olive oil and it's really it's soaked it in well be so you had that soaking then? Yes, yeah. I, I, well I mixed it about an hour ago. Right, okay, so okay. you've left, right, okay, so the cauliflower had been soaking in the dressing. Yep. So that's just going to go into the oven now. So okay. we're going to put the cauliflower straight into the oven. That's it. And we'll start cooking everything else. And we'll just put... So there's two pans. Yep. You're cooking uh, everything at the same time. Yep. There's about a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. And a little olive oil in here, maybe about a tablespoon. So you're just heating that oil up now? Yes. Right, just going to add a knob of butter to the oil for taste more than anything. Is that right, Rico? It gives it a bit of better colour as well. So we're going to coat the, the sole in the almond flour. So you don't need any egg wash or anything? No, you no, just no, put it's, just, it's just flour. The almond, it's not acting as a breadcrumb, it's acting as flour. So right, okay. Which does what? Stops it sticking. Okay. And we're going to put these two into the pan, skin side down. So that they've been in for a minute on the one side. Yep. Meanwhile, Rico's going to start making the sauce. We're yep. just adding the onion to the frying pan. Yep. So we're just going to sweat these down without any colour and then add the mushrooms. Now we're going to turn the first two fillets of salt. Uh, fillets were uh, you bought them from our usual fishmonger from, from Taylor's fishmonger uh, these are lemon sole let's give this another quick start and we'll, at this point we'll add the mushrooms as well cook plenty mushrooms I like mushrooms that's better <laughs> season this as well just now we'll put some salt Pepper. Brown pepper. And we'll just sweat that down. So that's the uh, first batch done. Rico's just going to do another batch. Same again. Are you going to put them in the oven and you're putting them there? No, I'll just put, well, I'll have to put them somewhere. I don't want to put them in the plate yet. Right, okay. I'm just going to put them on there. And then we'll probably just warm them slightly in the oven if they've cooled down. Okay. Okay. So Rico's doing a double batch. So yeah. he's just putting these on the tray and if they need warmed, he's just going to put them in the oven. Mushrooms are still sweating off just here while we cook fries the next two. Okay, that's the mushrooms sweated down now, yeah? Yeah, we've got a couple of tablespoons of wine. That's going to help us make the sauce, just let that reduce slightly and then we'll add the cream. So the 
with a wee sprinkle of fresh parsley and we'll also add some fresh cream at this time So that's been cooking for a couple of minutes A couple of minutes, yep Just going to taste it for seasoning Need some more pepper. Absolutely. Just give it a touch of salt. Get a little bit more. I'm going to add a wee touch of lemon to it as well, just a wee squeeze of citrus. That's it. So I'm just going to put the fish in the oven for a couple of minutes, just for one wee minute at the bottom here. Keep it warm. And I'm going to saute off my potatoes in here. That'll be potatoes for Rico. So he's just parboiled some potatoes and he's just going to saute them in the pan for himself. And then we'll be should be ready to plate. Just add in the potatoes to the butter. Really tasty way of doing potatoes, isn't it? Just Absolutely. So easy. You actually, did you not just cook these in the microwave? Yep. We don't want potatoes. Potatoes are high in carbs. I'm just coming out the freezer. Some the fried sauce and the potatoes and the parsley. Right, that's it. Then ready for action. Okay, so that's the cauliflower out of the oven. That's ready as well. So what we'll do is we'll put a good helping of cheese on this. Put it back in the oven and then we'll start plating. So about 60 grams I used of cheddar and Edam mixed. That fish looks so good. Okay, just adding the sauce to the fish. Oh my goodness me, I cannot wait. Well, this will be yours then, Rico? This will be mine, Andrew, yes. I'll just a little of the, the broccoli and some potatoes but that is and we'll get, get the cauliflower out you shouldn't be allowed any cauliflower Right, two. There we are. Lemon sole, mushroom and onion cream sauce, broccoli, potatoes and cauliflower gratin. There you go. All keto friendly. Well, the potatoes are not. Correct. So I'll have everything but the potatoes. the potatoes. Correct. I better plate yours as well then. I'm just going to have a wee taste of the cauliflower while Rico's plating my fish. Mmm. What herbs did you put on that? It's lovely. Mm. Thyme, garlic and a little cumin stem. Mm. This is a tender stem broccoli. And that is yours, my darling. Okay, so let's open this beauty. Definitely, sort of a, an aroma of nectarine or peaches. The same in the palate, you get this sort of ripe stone fruit, that finish that you always get with a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, that zing. <laughs> But it hasn't got that overzing that which I don't like in Sauvignon Blanc. Because you're not really a great fan of Sauvignon no, Blanc. No, I'm not a great fan of Sauvignon Blanc. Although I love a Sancerre, which is a Sauvignon Blanc, it's where Sauvignon Blanc probably originated. And I love this grey wacky. 
I think this is the best New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, better than Cloudy Bay. Are well, you going to have a wee taste of it? I'm going to taste, yeah, I'm okay. looking forward to it. Cheers. I mean, I know I love this wine anyway. This is one of my favourite Sauvignon Blancs. Oh. And you know, now, I because I have been drinking a different Sauvignon Blanc, when you take this, you really feel the difference. There's almost like, when it, once it's gone, you get that, when you first taste it, it's very smooth, as you know, as opposed to my regular Sauvignon Blanc, where you get that kind of zing, as you said, this is a lot smoother without that zing. But then you almost get like an aftertaste of bitterness as it hits you in the back of the throat, is what I get from it, so it's this smoothness, uh -huh, go on. Yep, it's perfectly balanced. That's what it's all about. It is absolutely delicious. How much was this, Rico? Between 14 and 17 pounds a bottle in the UK market. So, so it's kind of up there, isn't it? Right, I'm going to taste my sole, which is probably one of my favourite fishies with the sauce, and again, one of my favourite sauces. So this is like a Breton sauce. What's your adaptation of a Breton sauce? Well, mm, normally I would have made it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. And the cauliflower. Just perfect. I'll just taste my potatoes, will I? <laughs> Happy date night. Cheers, darling. <laughs> Cheers. Maybe you should have filmed that part. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And uh, remember, if you'd like to see more videos from me or us, I will link one here, here. And if you're not already subscribed, just press the A right here. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Took you three minutes to see all that, man. <laughs>